question going forward of bathroom and locker room access for transgender students and the issue of training at Lakota teachers and support staff on the specific needs of these students. Um, Mr. Schaefer, could you start? Uh, sure. Um, again, I'm very supportive of our transgender student population. When I, I first joined the board, I knew very little about this topic. And when we first discussed this as a board, I knew very little about this topic. But what I did is I reached out and I talked to some parents and talked to people who were actually living this on a daily life, and they helped educate me. And one of the things they told me is that the student population doesn't feel supported, and because of that, the, the suicide attempt rate is up to 70%. And when I heard that statistic and thought about our kids, and it changed my mind of how I wanted to approach this, because I can't imagine being in a situation where you felt so unsupported and you didn't have any other choices that 70% of the population is attempting suicide. And from that, it made me passionate about supporting these kids and making sure that they have a place, that they feel welcome, and that they're comfortable. I think right now, we don't even realize, people don't realize how many transgender students we have in our buildings you don't know that they're a transgender student. They're just Bobby, or they're just Sally, or they're just your friend. Um, and we're already dealing with this on a daily basis, and making sure these students are supported, making sure we're following the laws, and complying with what we need to do to support these students is critically important to me. We've made some changes. We've added bullying policies, or anti-bullying wording in our policies, and I think that's an important step, and I'd like us to see further to go further and make sure in our administrative guidelines we have clear direction of how we're handling our students so they're not uh, just faced with the benevolence of a particular principal, but we have consistent guidelines from building to building. All right, thank you. Sir Hahn? Yes, um, you know, uh, everyone needs to feel safe and comfortable coming to school. That, that's absolutely first and foremost. Um, uh, how, how do we handle uh, this policy moving forward, uh, I believe the question last night was, would you, would you um, vote for the policy that was put forward? And the answer I said last night was no. Um, you know, this is a very, very personal issue between a parent, the child, the administrator in the facility, and the teacher that, that they're uh, learning from. And, and that's where it needs to be kept. It needs to be kept personal with those people and handled in a manner that's individual to, those, to that family. We should not be making public policy that removes the ability of the parent to make decisions on this, on this issue. So. Okay, thank you. Mr. Murray? I appreciate what you said. I really do, because you're passionate about about the situation. And I have to be honest with you, I probably started the situation here. Um, a while back, some of the transgender kids said that nobody from Lakota was listening to them. And they had put out a feelers for people and nobody came. And it was a superintendent that did not want anybody to go and talk to him. So I said, okay, you know what? I am a pastor at my church. I will listen to your concerns. Where are you at? And they told me it was at the Children's Hospital down in right off of Burnett Avenue. So I had no idea about children, you know, transgender. I, I, I didn't know what to expect. So I get in my car, you know, I drink a lot of coffee, go down there, and they talk in bathrooms and everything. So I get there at the transgender unit, and the first thing I said, ma'am, I've been driving a long time. Where's the men's bathroom? And she looked at me and said, so you, you don't quite get what, what you mean, you know, you know, you know, any bathroom is fine. And I looked, I said, oh, oh transgender, that's right, that's right. So, you know, and, and, and one of my neighbors told me what to expect. But I was shocked when I went in there. And hundreds of kids that are getting help from the transgender, because if they don't come out, some bad things come out. Suicide, like you were saying. But the ones that come out and they're supported, they are very, very normal kids. And I'm telling you, these kids had the same ambitions, the same fears that your kids would have here. Some of those kids that went on and become involved in plays that have done wonderful things, I think that they are some of the most interesting and 
wonderful kids that I've ever, ever talked to before. So my point is, whatever it takes to keep them safe is what I'm going to do. Now I know the teachers have a way of doing it and it's not policy and everything. I'm with the teachers. I don't want to force them to do something. But you can't help it. Every so often you're going to see Ray Murray get in his car going down to somebody's place because that transgender kid doesn't want to go to that bathroom. He wants me to go with him. I, I don't know how to stop that. But what I'm going to do is my best to make them feel comfortable. So. All right, thank you. Uh, Mrs. O'Connor? I want every child that walks through our doors to feel safe, including our transgender students. And I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with families and students on the issue, and they've been very forthcoming about what issues they deal with. I want to go back to that earlier vote, which was December of 2017. The board had spent an entire year in training, in working with our legal counsel, in trying to understand the issues, and the board had come to a decision jointly and unanimously that we would not pass a policy on this. Our legal counsel said, don't pass a policy. There's no case law to support it. This is a changing societal issue. And if you pass a policy, you don't have a legal basis to support it. We made a determination as a board that that was the route we were going to go. We would put administrative guidelines into place to help our administrators understand what they needed to do, and we would leave it there. The policy was brought forward with very little notice and a lot of passion on some people's parts. Um, but there was not a lot of time for us to do a lot with it. The policy, quite frankly, opened all bathrooms, opened all locker rooms, and took parents out of the decision-making process. And those were three big issues for me that I couldn't support that. If there's another policy put forward, I would look at it, I would examine it closely in the same way that I did this one. I would seek legal counsel to make sure that we had foundational ground for what we were trying to do. We put in very strong and have always had strong harassment and anti-bullying policies. We've added to those, and we've put sexual identity and gender identity into those policies so that it's very, very clear that those students are included as well. And I think that our staff, and from what I understand from our families, we're doing a good job for these students. We do take care of our students. Again, I support all of our students and want all of them to feel safe. All right, thank you. Um